Hello and welcome to STEM with Mr N, where every week I perform different demonstrations and explain the science behind what we're seeing. This week I'm going to explore the science of stalactites and stalagmites. Let's check it out. Stalactites are icicle shaped rock formations that grow down from the ceilings of caves and normally come to a point. Stalagmites are similarly shaped rock formations that grow up from the floors of caves. Today I'm going to set up an experiment looking at two different possible ways of making stalactites and stalagmites at home and then I'm going to explain the science behind how these rock formations are actually formed. To do this experiment I've got four jars all filled with hot water. I've got some baking powder, I've got some salt, I've got two spoons and I've also got some tin foil and string set up in another location where I'm going to leave my experiment because this one needs to be left for a week to get the full benefit of the formations. To start with I'm going to gradually add baking powder to each of these two jars and stir it around so it dissolves in the water. You'll notice that baking powder fizzes when it's added to water so be prepared for some spillages. I want to get the water to a point where I feel like it will not take any more baking powder. Now I'm going to do the same thing with these two jars but using the salt. So I'm going to add salt gradually and stir it around inside the jars until I feel like the water will not be able to take and dissolve any more salt. I'm using hot water in all of the jars because hot water makes substances dissolve faster. So that's me now prepared my four jars. I've got two with salt water and two with baking powder. I'm now going to go and set up the experiment. You'll notice that I've set up tin foil on the windowsill. This is because stalagmites grow up from the ground. So if we do get any stalagmites forming in this experiment, I don't want them to grow up from my windowsill, I want to keep that nice and clean. So I've put down the tin foil to catch any stalagmites as they form. I'm going to put the two jars of baking powder at one end and the two jars of salt at the other end. Between the two jars of baking powder, I'm going to run a piece of string and I'm going to make sure it has a dip in the middle of it. I'm going to do the same with a piece of string between the two jars of salt. So now that my experiment's set up, I'm going to leave it sitting there for a week. But I'm going to do a daily video check-in to see the progress.
Now that the week is up, I've carefully removed the experiment from the windowsill so that we can review the results. I'm going to start with the jars which had baking powder in them. You'll notice that around the top rim of one of the jars in particular, there is a big build-up of baking powder crystals. You can also see when you look at the string, there are a lot of baking powder crystals sticking out from the sides and the bottom of the string. There isn't anything that has formed on the tin foil, however. And now it's time to look at the jars which had salt in them. Again you'll notice there's a build-up of salt crystals around the top edges of the jars. You will also notice there is a lot of salt crystals that have built up all over the piece of string, especially hanging down. You might also spot I've had to tie the string onto the handles when I've moved the experiment, because the weight of these salt crystals on the string was so heavy, it was actually pulling the string back out of the jars. You'll also notice there's a build up of salt crystals underneath the piece of string on the tin foil in a few different patches. What's happening in this experiment is that water is being absorbed by the string and is travelling up and out of the jar and then down into the dip of the string. As the water drips down or as it evaporates, it leaves behind the baking powder or the salt on the string. Over time, the left behind baking powder or salt build up and that's what's forming these crystals on the string and round the rims of the glass. Also on the one with the salt, you can see where the water has dripped down, it has left salt deposits behind on the tin foil. These have also started to build up over the week, so we have some formations on the tin foil. This is actually how stalactites and stalagmites are formed in caves. As water runs along the ceilings of caves, it gathers up minerals and then it reaches a point where it drips down to the floor. As it is dripping down, it is leaving minerals behind on the ceiling. And that's what forms the stalactites, those icicle shaped rock formations pointing down to the ground. We can see this in this experiment with the crystals of baking powder and salt that have been left behind on the string where the water has reached and is dripping down or evaporating from. Stalagmites build up over time from the ground of the cave because that is where the water is dripping to. Although the water leaves minerals behind on the ceiling as it drips down, it also takes minerals with it to the floor of the cave and these build up over time to form the stalagmites. The easy way to remember that stalactites come from the ceiling of a cave and stalagmites come from the ground of the cave is that stalactites has a C in it for ceiling and stalagmites has a G in it for ground. This is a really easy experiment to do at home if you've got a couple of empty jars or a couple of empty glasses, some cotton string and some baking powder or some salt. I've really enjoyed watching this experiment over the past week to see how it's getting on, checking in on it every day and seeing the developments. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. As always, I would like to take this opportunity to answer any science questions you have about any science topics at all. So feel free to email me at stemwithmrn at outlook.com and I'll get back to you with answers to your questions. You can subscribe to the channel by pushing the button here and I've added links here to the other STEM demonstrations I've done so far. This has been STEM with Mr. N, exploring stalactites and stalagmites.